Doctor, let's review the situation. One, trapped in a space-time fissure, this lesser pothole and more a pot canyon. Two, TARDIS's engines are, what, got a wonky retrograde over thruster? <sighs> Whatever the reason, they're not responding. Also, three, none of the other controls are working. <sighs> also, also, four, all the emergency switches are dead. The coffee machine's on the fritz, and I've got a nasty burn mark on my third favourite coat. Second favourite. Right, think. I'm pretty sure that canyon means something's damaging the time stream, which is bad. But without functioning controls, I can't actually check that. <sighs> and seven, I'm talking to myself. Again. Anything else while we're at it? Oh, for the love of... What the hell? Okay, good news. The TARDIS isn't trapped in a pothole. Bad news. Welcome to the longest aside ever. Introductions first. I am the Doctor. You lot call me the Groovy Doctor, because nicknames are clearly your thing and because someone out there clearly likes Ashley Williams. Groovy. I'm pretty sure you're aware that I'm speaking lines written to me by the writer, and apparently, though I don't believe a word of it, in this narrative, said writer has no control over the outcome. Ha. I also know that I'm being voice acted by a rather dashing individual. Is that really what that says? Dashing. Hey, you lot in the comments, is this fella dashing? That's not the word I'd use, but whatever. So you lot are probably wondering how I got into this mess, aren't you? Yep, that's me, fella in the red checkered coat. You can't see the red checkered coat because this is an audio play, but trust me, there is one. Ha! <laughs> Seriously, what an incredibly cliche way to begin my telling of this story. I can only apologise, you lot. Couldn't think of anything better, writer. Even took the time to write this self-aware apology. Ha! <laughs> How magnificently meta. Sorry about that, dear listeners. But you and I both know this is an audio drama saga. Yeah, very pretentious sounding there, Rory. Yeah, re really, really sounding like you're taking yourself very seriously, I see. Ha. Quite a long-winded one, too. Reams and reams of monologues, lots of people talking to themselves, figuratively and indeed, literally. Hello, George. And Dom. And me. Somebody's going to get their money's worth out of this. Google, probably. Google jokes! Ha! Oh yeah, I I'm dealing with the matter. I mean... Everybody's been addressing you lot, but unlike certain people, I am willing to go, Hey, you, out there on the train, listening to this. These ways, some of you are probably on a train. Some of you are probably at home. Some of you might even be in the bath. Risky. Listening to this, in the bath. Don't drop your tablet. Now, higher beings will patronise you and tell you that you'll find it difficult to understand what's going on and why. Uh, I disagree. You lot have stepped in wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey me uh. Sorry, I've got to rinse my mouth out. Can't believe I actually said that. Give me a sec, please. Oh? Hello. Am I finally through the chatter and the clatter out there? Good to know. I'm trying to get a signal for... I don't know. My watch stopped about a time period ago. And I've been too busy talking to myself and pressing buttons to really keep track. Not that my internal clock is that reliable. Which is especially ironic when you consider that I'm a Time Lord. Hmm. If you're hearing this, pay attention. Time is twisting. Atlantis has become an empire. Pluto is a planet again. My coffee has become decaf. And I... Response? Text only. The multiverse is in peril? Again? Must be Thursdays. I can never get the hang of Thursdays. But here was me. Thinking time was being messed with on a local scale, relatively local, not quite corner shop, but something within the realms of I can sort this out and my Todd with a manageable amount of fuss. Multiversal shenanigans is a different beastie. Intergalactic, planetary. Wait. The walls between realities breaking down, time being rewritten, all starting from the last day of the Time War. That far back? Stretching forward to now? That's disconcerting, to say the least. What could have happened that far back? There's only one way to find out. 
it'll take a bit of jiggly and a whole lot of pokery, but... Ah, here we go. Oh wait, hang on. There we go. Let's see if we can figure out what the heck is happening. Okay, shh, it's okay. Calm down, happy? Maybe give me some controls? Great. It's even worse than before. Not just unresponsive, it's totally kaput. Whatever happened, it's thrown the main power so out of whack, I don't even have the charge to turn the light on. Glad I gave the overhead lamp a potato battery. Thank you, Luigi. So, the TARDIS is knocked out, but the doors can potentially still be opened manually. But, if there's no atmosphere out there, I'd never get it shut in time. Sucked out into the void. Or is it blown out? Either way, I'd be dead in an instant. No way to save myself. Whew, decisions, decisions. Hang on. Plan B. Ow! Bioelectric energy channeled through the charger house for the Sonic. I think that's probably, what, six years of my life? I'm gonna have way more grey hairs after this one. But I can get a reading. The TARDIS can start a recharge cycle and, most importantly, the door will open. Hi there. You haven't seen a wristwatch, have you? <laughs> Stupid question, you won't have seen anything. Even if you could see, which I doubt, you'd be in a position where you're more interested in, you know, that, out there, mega conflict, all or nothing, literally. <laughs> what a glorious mess. And all the fault of, well, that's not my business. Survival is my business. My only business. The only thing I'm interested in right now. I'm not even supposed to be here right now. I had a mission, a quest, an errand. I had to kill a monster. One of the worst. But now, thanks to this mess, it's gone. Retreated beyond the multiverse until someone resets this mess and fixes everything. Don't give me that look. I know who and what I look like, but I'm not helping. In lieu of killing my own white whale, I'll settle for not dying and killing a few Daleks. They might be here in every permutation of their mutation that ever existed, but they die. Oh, but they do die. Death is their favourite pastime. It only seems fitting to let them enjoy it too. Life is wasted on the living. But death is never wasted on a killer. Now don't get me wrong, I'm no saint. But the Daleks are pure evil. Somebody else's problem though. I'm not mad enough to think killing a few will make any difference. Beyond keeping me alive a little longer. Oh don't mistake me. I am quite mad, yes. Definitely a madman. Undeniably so. But the last flicker of sanity burns brilliant in me. I'm sane enough to know that all of this, maddened and maniacal as it is, all of this is going to be fixed. I have faith. You just wait. Any moment now. He's a coming. Or she. Or they. <laughs> doctor, whoever they're going to be. The Doctor. The one to save us all. Let's see if they can do it, hmm? In the meantime... <laughs> in the meantime... Let the future come. Whatever it is. I know not all that may be coming, but be it what it will, I'll go to it laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what am I looking at here? Times wrecked, yes, can see that, but there's something more going on here. But to push further back, it's impossible. I'd be consigned to an impossible to navigate hellscape, or worse, unmade and trapped in limbo. Can't do anything from there, can't do anything from here, but at least I've got navigation. Oh, so I was right. There is someone out there, messaging me again. No, not messaging. Just a signal. A signal that someone out there is watching me. You're out there still, watching. 
And if you watch it because you can't help or won't, hopefully it's the former. I would hate to think you're just enjoying watching the universe slash multiverse fall apart. That'd be awfully rude. So I can sense you, detect you as a TARDIS, but if I can, and this is a multiversal phenomenon, I can try and find the others. Asteroid. Atmospheric shell? Seems a bit pointless, unless... Hey, you! Whoa, 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 calm it down there, mate. Wait, you're a Time Lord? TT Capsule Operator Second Class Karnak. Who are you? Doctor. The Doctor, but... The Doctor? That's impossible. I was going to say the same thing to you. Gallifrey was... No. Okay, let's start from the top. What are you doing here? I... When the Daleks overran Arcadia, Gallifrey fell. Fell? Yeah, the Daleks overran us. You were there, loads of you. But... Most of them were killed, I think. Hmm, I see. Let me guess. You don't remember what I'm talking about. Oh, I do remember. I just remember differently. And you ended up here? Stole a TARDIS. Ran. Wanted to try and escape, but... But I think time's shattering. The time war is worsening. Which is odd, considering it was supposed to have ceased long ago. Something's happened. Yeah, obviously. Look, if you're alive... If I'm alive? Well, you think I'm a zombie or something? I don't smell that bad. If you're alive, then you have to help. Well, I am alive, so... Okay, into my TARDIS. You can help fly. What? You're a TT capsule operator, right? Ah, no, 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 no. I'm rated for TT models past type 90, not antiques. Antiques? Uh, um... I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Now, get in. We're going to jump start over a little push and then get going. Going... Go going where? I don't understand. Well, if what you've said is true, Karnak, we've got a universe to save. Oh, that bit the spot right there. Hydration, people. Top voice actor tip. Well, anyway, like I said, you lot are clever. I mean, you've got to be your Doctor Who fan film listeners. You understand techno babble, right? I have faith in you, though you've certainly put it to the test as of recent events. Anyway, me, this party, how did I get here? Certainly not by letting the days go by. Ha! Talking heads joke! Of course, that's technically speaking, all I really am in this is a talking head. Not that you could even see my head. For all you know, I could be sitting in the bath. I'm not sitting in the bath, but that's not the point. So, I ended up gate crashing this party after me writer got asked by Rory if he'd include the groovy doctor and he said yes, so naturally I had to be included. From an in-universe perspective, I ended up gate crashing this party after my TARDIS was blasted out of the sky by the Dalek Crucible. Nasty sods, the lot of them. See, I was exploring the fourth wall when it happened, and yes, before you ask, it is a concept that exists within the multiverse, and yes, it's consistently broken by people and beings such as I. Well, those sitcoms you watch, yeah, they have their own designated universes out there, and most of the characters are now fighting in the Time War. Good luck, Jim! You can't see it, but I just looked at you through the screen. Try not to get killed by Wanda Maximoff again! Sometimes I wish I was live action so I could really look through the screen. Like, properly do that. Laurel and Hardy style. Another fine mess you've got me into. Maybe one day, depending on what dwem I've planned, all up in the air, and I'm not really the important one, am I? I suppose I... Oh yeah, have I died in the narrative yet? Oh, not quite. I'll keep this brief then. My quite frankly magnificent time ship was exploring the fourth wall, and the next thing you know I left a great big TARDIS shaped hole in it, because of that damn crucible. Ended up landing on New Earth, slap bang in the middle of that notorious hospital. No casualties, thankfully, on my part, but that is when the Daleks honed onto my ship. See what you like about them. They sure are resourceful. The smell of apple grass was swiftly overwhelmed by the smell of mustard gas, reminiscent of the earlier wars on Scala. Real hodgepodge attack. And it became more obvious why by the second. The faction of Daleks that had decided upon rudely hitting me out of the sky and invading New Earth were a group of very early in production renegades. Not of any importance in the cosmic scheme, you understand, but it explains their tactics when invading the planet. Primarily chemical warfare. Nasty. 
It wasn't long before most of the cities were destroyed and I could do nothing but watch it happen and try to get people to safety. Everything you've come to expect from the Daleks. But amplified. Because this is a 60th anniversary story, everybody, and we've got to up them stakes. Now, you may have heard me mention earlier that I die within this narrative, and that's not strictly true yet. But as much as I don't want to die, I know it has to end up that way. At least I think I know. I know a lot of things. I know who wrote this audio. I know who tweaked this monologue. I know who voice acts me and other characters. And I know I'm within an audio drama and why. But even I don't know how we're going to get out of this one. I can't see the end. I don't like not knowing. Well, I kind of don't like not knowing. I don't really care enough usually. But this is important. <sighs> Look, it isn't one of my character traits. But as far as I can see, as far as I know, I'm destined to die in this battle. It wasn't long before New Earth became very much how the old Earth is at this point in the narrative. An uninhabitable mess. But unlike Earth, the Daleks were far more efficient in the destruction of this planet. Which means they must need the old Earth for something. Or perhaps they relish in their conquest of the planet after so long. Daleks are the masters of Earth. Eat all the cheese. Unimaginable power. That sort of thing. <laughs> the only survivors on New Earth currently are myself and the radiated macra that now freely roam this burnt up rock. Trust me when I say, they're not exactly good company on those lonely, lonely nights. Curse of Fatal Death reference right there. The Daleks use them occasionally for fuel. If I'm being honest, I don't know what the Daleks' master plan is. I'm talking about the actual plan and not the episode. Don't at me, Hartwell fans. Chadders, keep your hand down. And I hate not knowing what's going to happen next. But there's one thing I do know. I'm the Doctor. I'm not just going to sit here. There's got to be something I can do. To do. Something. But for the moment, everything's down to you, Lon. Don't drop anything, or whole universes of friends could be lost forever, problematic as it might sound to you lot. I'll be back breaking the fourth wall once all this is over. Now, knowing Earth's obsession with nostalgia, perhaps I can find the ruins of a replica of the Winchester somewhere and wait for this all to blow over. If it's not obliterated entirely. Or maybe, maybe I'll do something else. See you all on the Valentine's Day special. <laughs> Right, so if such rewiring likes of which God has never seen... Uh, there! Hello? Anyone out there? Testing, testing, one, two, Okumashu! Oh wait, the lasers. Um, hello? Success! I'm gonna guess I'm talking to the Doctor. Good guess. And you are also the Doctor? That's right, Cocker. Ah, no. And that's Karnak. Karnak's... Nervy. You'd be nervy too if you were witnessing a flagrant disregard for the laws of time. No stress about that. Trust me, it's going to get way worse. Oh, great. I love it when people say stuff like that. Really? No. Oh, fair enough then. Okay, Doctor, are we the only ones here? Wherever here is. Good question, and good point. I don't have a clear read on our location. How would you find me? Followed the signal. And your navigation says that we're... Nowhere, no time. But I still have navigation, which suggests we are in some place and some time. So... So it's a limbo effect. Uh, what? Sorry? When a timeline chock full of complex space-time events or anomalies, like, you know, me, gets erased or unmade, those events stick around, get enough of them from, say, a bunch of parallel universes, and you'd end up with a negative space where all those complex events get stuck. We must be on the outskirts, the equivalent of that one pool that just won't go in the hole. Hmm, precarious. One wrong move and... In we go. All right, so, what do we do? I think... More TARDISes? Oh, looks like it. One more, I think... Hi! Can anyone hear me? This is the Doctor. I'm trying to... Oh. Oh, indeed. Hello. Great. Which one of us is going to say it first? Say what? Is this thing on? Oh, for... You! Him? Me. Hold on to your coats, boys. This is where it gets complicated. <laughs>